a bird. It's a plane. It's Wi-Fi 6. Thank goodness, too, because we've got billions of IoT devices to connect. That's right, my friends. Wi-Fi is improving because Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E are bringing better network efficiency, longer range, lower latency, and better power efficiency, too, which is good because there seems to be an exponential number of IoT and IIoT devices coming to market each day. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Andrew Hart from Infineon, Andy Ross from Laird Connectivity, and I examine the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, why IIoT designs are perfectly suited for Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, and how Wi-Fi 6 and 6E will bring Wi-Fi connectivity to a broad range of new applications. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic. Hi, Andy. Thank you so much for joining me. No problem. Thanks for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to today. Absolutely. And thank you, Andrew, for joining me. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Great. Okay, so first, Andrew, we are talking about Wi-Fi 6E and the AirRock CYW5557X Wi-Fi 6E tri-band and Bluetooth SOCs today. But before we dig into the details, can you set the stage for us? What benefits does Wi-Fi 6 bring to the table versus previous generations? Yeah, sure. Before I get into the specific benefits of our solution, let's just talk about the spec in general. And, you know, Wi-Fi 6, before that, the previous generations of Wi-Fi were just all about higher speed. Faster, faster, faster was what it was all about. And when they got to Wi-Fi 6, yes, it does have some incremental speed increases, but really it's more about efficiency, making more efficient use of available bandwidth and available networks. And so a lot has been put into the spec to improve efficiency in congested environments in networks with a large amount of users actively using the network at the same time, and also enhancements in robustness and range and in power savings. The other significant uh, advancement is Wi-Fi 6E. When you hear 6E, it specifically refers to the additional spectrum introduced in the 6 gigahertz band. So there's about uh, 1,200 megahertz of additional available channels, which depending on how you dice it up, could be up to 1480 megahertz wide channels or up to 59 standard width uh, 20 megahertz channels, depending on the region you're in as well. So a lot more usable spectrum, a lot more channels available, and the channels tend to be cleaner in the first place because there's fewer other devices making use of that spectrum. So really more advancements in network efficiency and an availability of clean spectrum is what Wi-Fi 6 and 6E is all about. So what specific benefits are we talking about when it comes to the AirRock CYW5557X series of products? Yes, well, I, I like to think of the benefits in terms of how they address the major concerns and the major challenges. And on the left side here, we see the most common. These are roughly ranked in order of frequency of complaints and problems encountered by Wi-Fi users today. So service interruptions, slower than expected networking speeds, coverage problems, difficulties getting connected are really the dominant complaints that we hear, but also concerns about battery life and, of course, uh, security of your connection. And so the solution we're introducing today really addresses all of these with various features and enhancements. We'll talk a lot about the network robustness that's built into this device, the throughput improvements, the improvements in latency, the range extension is something I'll talk about in just a moment, and all of those address the network-related concerns, and also the advancements we've made in power consumption at both the device and system design layer in terms of the system design level and also the multi-layered security that we offer on this device. Okay, so let's talk about range and coverage, which are major concerns in IoT devices. How does this solution help here? Yeah, so range and coverage, as you saw from the complaints on the previous slide, are extremely important topics. And you know, there's a couple of different layers here, as you can see in this diagram. First of all, there's inherent improvements in Wi-Fi 6 compared to previous generations. There's an extended range VSS feature that extends the available range at low rates. 
So you'll get a natural boost just from upgrading your Wi-Fi spec. But what we've done on top of that with the CYW5557X series is we've implemented a series of features and enhancements that we refer to as range boost. And what this does is without doing anything proprietary, it works with standard access points and standard peer client devices. We have made significant improvements to our transmit and our receive design that is able to eke out considerable additional range. As you can see in the graph on the right side, at just about any point of range, you'll get faster throughput than without these enhancements. And also the long tail on the right where uh, the limits of your range at long distance have become a lot longer, more than uh, twice the range compared to previous generation devices. So pretty significant improvements in both the coverage of your network and in the distance at which you're able to maintain a connection with your client device. So interference is also an issue that affects Wi-Fi performance, right? How can this solution help me here? Yes, interference can be a big issue. You know, the range figures tend to be measured under pretty clean conditions, but the world is uh, not always a clean place. You may be operating in frequencies that are seeing interference from other devices. You may be operating in congested networks. And you may also experience noise coming from the, your own hardware system. And we have algorithms in place to deal with all of that. The left side here shows what we call narrow band and wide band interference. So this would be from non-Wi-Fi devices. It could be coming from microwave ovens or other ambient type noise in the air, or it could even be coming from your own hardware, HDMI or different clocks running on the system that may generate harmonics that to generate very narrow bands of interference within your channel. And we have uh, algorithms specifically designed to mitigate and reduce the impact of those types of noise sources. In the middle, we talk about our wireless interference mitigator. So this is interference from other Wi-Fi devices, which may be operating in the same channel, what we call co-channel interference, or may be coming from an adjacent channel that bleeds over into the spectrum you're using. And so we have algorithms in place to mitigate both co-channel and adjacent channel interference. And also we've taken advantage of uh, some new elements of the Wi-Fi 6 and 6E specification, BSS coloring and AV, which allows you to distinguish between legitimate Wi-Fi traffic that's coming from your own network versus traffic from another network that may even be operating in the same channel. And to the extent that you're able to distinguish and ignore the irrelevant traffic, you'll improve your throughput, improve your robustness, and avoid wasting power on uh, traffic that uh, you don't need to pay attention to. So power efficiency is also a big design concern too. So how does the CYW5557X address power-related issues? Yes. So as you said, power efficiency is an extremely important concern, particularly in the IoT world. You know, the most obvious case is a battery-operated device. You want the battery to last as long as possible. You want to be able to design a nice small battery for certain form factors. But really, it goes beyond battery devices. Just about any device can benefit from lower power in terms of keeping thermals under control and just a general green design. Why, why would you ever want to use more power than necessary to accomplish a given task? So we take a lot of efforts into designing in power efficiency, both at the device level and at the system design level. So the left side, we have uh, enhancements in our uh, receiver architecture that enable advanced uh, low power features operating in receive mode. You can save about 20% versus solutions that don't have those features. We've also optimized our radio calibration to use 30% less power than before, which can help with your system power supply design for peak current requirements. Generally, you'll see improved battery life through the optimization of spatial streams using bandwidth more efficiently and adapting dynamically to use the most efficient configuration for a particular connection. We take advantage of target wake time, which is a new feature in Wi-Fi 6 that helps with both network efficiency and power savings. And we have other advanced technologies, uh, the filtering that I've mentioned before that helps avoid wasting time on retransmission and on listening to irrelevant traffic. So those are device level improvements. And on the right side, you know, we show how you can improve power efficiency at the system level as well. If you have a design that requires a persistent, always on Wi-Fi connection, perhaps connecting all the way through to the cloud for low latency remote control and wake up, our device can help with that. We have system network layer offloads that can keep your Wi-Fi and your cloud connection active and maintained. 
without requiring the host system to remain in an awake state. So your host system can go to sleep and let the Wi-Fi device take care of all the housekeeping needed to maintain your connection. Or if your usage model allows you to completely turn off Wi-Fi when it's not needed, you can use a very low power BLE signal, a Bluetooth low energy as a sort of an out of band beacon to wake up the device in lieu of a Wi-Fi connection, which is an even more efficient mechanism for devices that do not require a persistent connection. So saving power at both the device and the system level was a key motivation in this CYW5557X development. Okay, so Andy, what other benefits does this solution bring to the table? So layered connectivity's part in the whole solution is taking the excellent silicon that Infineon provides and opening up access to that to a much broader range of customers and markets. The work we do is around taking the complexity of integrating a silicon solution into a system and taking a chunk of that work and putting that complexity into the module to make it easier for customers to use the module. Modules and certified modules have been around for a long time, and I think a lot of people understand the benefits that they bring, certainly the advantage that they provide to a, a group of customers and markets that otherwise wouldn't be able to get access to the technology that Infineon provides. What specifically LED does with respect to its connected modules is a range of benefits that we believe differentiate us from other module providers in the space. And if we break those down into some kind of easy blocks, you know, the first one is on the hardware side, we take a complex chip, we put it into a much easier and more complete package by integrating components and functions and making the design with respect to putting it into a platform much easier. And we put all of our experience behind that. We do a lot of testing and we do a lot of validation and we provide a high reliability product that customers can feel comfortable will work in their system. We marry that with a software solution where, as you can imagine, software solution with these technologies that Andrew just talked about, that a lot of new things going on in Wi-Fi 6 could be a little daunting for a software integrator who doesn't spend every day of his life integrating Wi-Fi, wondering how is he going to get all of this stuff into his platform and working with his system. Laird spends a lot of time putting together a thing that we call the Laird Backports Package. This is a number of components specifically in the Linux and Android space that deliver a driver, a supplicant, and a network manager that we've developed and confirmed QA tested, make sure they all work together. And then we deliver it in a package that supports multiple platforms and multiple kernels. We understand that not everybody's using the same Linux kernel, and therefore we've already done the work to prove that the thing will build and will work for them when they put it into their platform. Trying to make the time to test and to proof of concept as short as possible. But the big one for Wi-Fi 6 is uh, the regulatory certification. Certified modules have always claimed and, and been able to support um, regulatory certification and previous generations of Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5 have integrated and been part of the solution a number of regions around the world that have already been certified, tested to, so that it eases the effort of the OEM who's doing the integration when he wants to deliver a product into those markets. These new features have made the testing for regulatory compliance significantly more complex. And so, yes, they're great, high speed, lots of efficiency, but the back end of it is we need to make sure that everything is working to the law. That work is continuing to be done, but there is some significant changes and increases in the overall time and cost to do that. The end result is a certified module and a partner that provides that certified module that can do some significant risk mitigation when looking at integrating Wi-Fi, and specifically a very complex Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi 6, into your platform. It makes it easier for you to do a hardware integration with the services that layered connectivity provides, we do as much as we can to make sure it's right the first time. We deliver the regulatory certifications. We even have the ability to extend regulatory certifications beyond the core set that we do with our in-house chambers and test facilities. We hold our customers' hands through integration and then their own deployments out into the customer. So we don't abandon them at the sale of the module. We hold a hand all the way through to them delivering product to their customers. 
and can walk them through a full product life cycle. So not only the early heady days of introduction, but the long, cool and stressful days of being able to supply it on the back end of the product. It's a, a big contribution that we do with respect to enabling customers access to the wonderful technology that Infineon provides. So industrial IoT is a huge topic in electronic engineering today. What kind of solutions do you guys have for industrial Wi-Fi? All of our products are industrial temperature range. And in fact, a product that we're doing based upon the CY-W5557X family is a product that's based around the tri-band product called the CY-W55573. We will have a product called the Sona IF573. This is a very high performance Wi-Fi 6E product, tri-band, two by two, so over a gigabit of file link rate. It'll be in both surface mount packages and plug-in cards based around the M.2 standard. We have separate Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna paths to make sure that you can get the highest performance out of the part. It takes all of the goodness that Infineon delivers in terms of the support and the features that Infineon have integrated for the range and the narrow band and wide band to provide a rugged part. We add to that uh, global certifications for North America, Europe, Japan, and Australia, New Zealand, along with the Bluetooth SIG. We have integrated it into our layered backports package for both Linux and Android. And that's all in a device capable of supporting minus 40 to plus 85. Okay, so we also need to talk about certification, right? What does that look like for this solution? You know, this is a big advantage that certified modules from vendors like Laird Connectivity have provided. You know, this is all part of the delivered product. So, you know, the numbers that I'm talking about here aren't numbers that we go and ask customers. These are the numbers that we've invested in the products. But I think it's important to know that there's a big change and increase between the earlier Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5 products to the certification requirements of Wi-Fi 6. As much as anything to justify why the modules and certainly certified modules have a more important place in the solution than maybe even the earlier generations of Wi-Fi. As you can see across the life of Wi-Fi 4 to Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6, we're talking about four to five times the core expense to go and get the test reports done. And this is for a group of countries. So the group of countries that I talked about earlier on, North America, Europe, Japan, and Australia, this is a, an order of magnitude type number, significantly higher. But as important, if you want to add new countries to that, the expense to characterize the radio correctly so that it is compliant in those regions has gone up at the same rate as the, the testing itself. So this is just you know some information that the customer base and the OEMs looking at integrating Wi-Fi 6 understand understand, you know, these things don't come for free, but this is all being handed by layered connectivity by the module suppliers. And so you know, you're getting this extra advantage from the earlier generations. Okay, so this was a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, and I think it's quite easy, to be honest, um, Amelia. The uh, Wi-Fi 6 is a significant step forward. as We'd seen the generational throughput enhancements from 4, 5 to 6, and that exists. But the effort that has been spent to improve the efficiency and the features that have been added within the specification to enable access to those efficiencies is significant. Yes, it's a big step. It's one that, in all honesty, is opening up Wi-Fi to a number of applications that historically would have been at best challenging for Wi-Fi. In a lot of cases, just Wi-Fi wouldn't apply to. The range, the lower power, the latency really can unlock not only improved performance on throughput and power, but also the opportunity to look at Wi-Fi in new applications that maybe previously the OEMs had determined they actually need a separate technology in order to answer that question, that it's worth looking at Wi-Fi 6 and specifically Wi-Fi 6E to answer those questions. Wi-Fi 6 is here now for the industrial, medical, commercial space. We'll be delivering the product based upon the CYW55573 this quarter. It'll be at all of the major distributors. We'll have both the modules and the EVKs available with the supporting software. 
there is data already available on our modules as data available for the Infineon base chipset as well. And here are the links and landing pages. Just go to the LaidConnect.com website, have a look at the Wi-Fi Bluetooth modules, and you'll see our family of Wi-Fi 6 products. And this is just the first of a number of Infineon based modules that we'll be releasing over the next six to nine months. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Andy. Thank you very much, Amelia. Appreciate the opportunity. And thank you for joining me, Andrew. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. If you can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.